Alright guys, we gotta talk about Senran Kagura here today. Because recently the series creator, Kanichiro Takaki, did an interview with Inside Games. Which is a Japanese site, so link in the description to the Silicon Era translation of the interview. Which I actually have right in front of me here because I want to quote it directly. And during this interview they asked Takaki about, you know, the recent new regulations from Sony about their new censorship policies and what effect that's going to have on the future of the series. And Takaki gave sort of a vague answer, but they asked him uh, with the new strict regulations toward sexy expressions on PS4, you know, what does that mean for Senran Kagura 7's finished version, and will it be vastly different from the original idea? Now to this, Takaki responded, That's right, we probably wouldn't be able to release it with its original idea, but we're not restarting everything, just thinking things over. Now your guess is as good as mine as to what that actually means. Uh, especially since... For one thing, we don't know what the original idea for Sinron Kagura 7 really was. And also, it's still pretty much unclear exactly what Sony does allow and what they don't, considering how unevenly applied that their new rules have been. Like, take Burst Renewal for an example. Uh, a lot of other games that have been censored had to have their CG images changed. But Burst Renewal didn't have any of their CGs touched. They didn't have uh, any of the, you know, exploding clothes or anything like that touched. The only thing that got removed was the intimacy mode. Which proves to me that whoever made that decision has probably never even played a Center on Kagura game because if they did, they probably would have hit the diorama mode before they hit the intimacy mode. Since people make way more raunchy stuff in that mode than intimacy mode could ever dream of. So, but again, diorama mode was untouched. So exactly what Sony allows and what they don't is still totally unclear. So whatever Takaki means by original idea could mean a million different things. And he says that they're just thinking things over. So... It's really up in the air as far as specifics of what any of that will actually translate to. A lot of people are worried that Takaki's going to be self-censoring in order to, you know, meet these requirements and actually get the game released on PS4. Which is possible. Uh, I don't think it's that likely. Now, if you remember uh, late last year when this whole censorship crap first started, I predicted that Sinon Kagura 7 would end up not sticking to just uh, PlayStation 4 and would end up being ported to Switch and or Steam as well. And I think I'm going to stick with that prediction. Uh, they actually asked Takaki in this interview if, you know, the next game in the series would likely come to Switch. And he said that they can't say anything concrete for now, but that there's a good chance. Now, by the next new Sinron Kagura series game, I'm not sure if they're referring actually to 7 or whatever is coming after 7. But either way, I think 7's probably not going to stick to being a PS4 exclusive. I think the only way that it does remain exclusive is if they've already signed some sort of exclusive contract with Sony and they're legally not allowed to release it on any other platforms. Which again, we don't know if they have or not. But with Sony's crackdown, there's just no way this series is going to be able to survive long term on these platforms. Uh, so really his only options is to move the series elsewhere or water it down to the point where he's going to start alienating parts of his audience. Which Takaki has a good track record. Uh, I trust Takaki more than I trust a lot of developers. And I don't think he's going to end up disappointing his fans just to, you know, meet corporate demands and things. 
So I still think it's very likely Seven's going to end up on Switch and or PC. Uh, they also talked in this interview about possibly, you know, switching the series entirely to PC going forward. I hope that doesn't happen, mainly for two reasons. Uh, one of which is that pretty much eliminates any chance of getting physical copies. And as many of you know, I love getting physical copies of my games when at all possible. And the other reason is that it'll most likely end up exclusively through Steam, and I'm not the biggest Steam fan either. Uh, if they release them on GOG or something, then that would be a lot better for me personally. But I don't want to see it go exclusively PC. Like, releasing it through Steam and then, like, physically on Switch, I think would be a lot better of an alternative. It would be able to satisfy more people that way. Uh... One other thing I wanted to touch on here that he did mention in this interview was when they asked him about, you know, the crackdowns on PS4, uh, Takaki implied that it wasn't just Sony cracking down on things, that it was other companies as well. He said, quote, the regulation movement isn't restricted to PlayStation, but it's been spreading across all platforms, all genres around the world. Now, unless Takaki knows something we don't, which is possible, but other than that, I'm going to have to call bullshit on this because as far as public knowledge goes, the only one doing any sort of increase in their regulations is Sony. I haven't heard a word about Microsoft wanting to censor any games, which... You know, there's like, I think, 12 Xboxes in Japan, so that's not really a problem anyway. Uh, Nintendo seems to be taking a totally hands-off approach, at least to their third-party titles. Probably because they're just so happy to have third-party support again after the Wii U generation. And Steam at least claims that uh, they're going to be allowing all sorts of content as long as it's not illegal or spam or anything now there's been some inconsistencies with steam i don't know exactly what's going on over there i don't know if it's just rogue employees or unclear policies or what exactly is happening but i don't know they're at least not cracking down to the extent that sony is so Takaki making this sort of statement might just be his attempt at not defending Sony, but sort of avoiding calling them out in public due to, obviously, they have a lot of business relationships with them, and he probably doesn't want to piss them off. Last year, didn't someone from uh, Nippon Ichi Software come out and say something bad about Sony, and they end up having to like come out and apologize about it? I remember reading something about that. that it's been a long time, but I heard something about that happening. So, you know, I think especially Japanese developers probably want to avoid directly insulting these large corporations that they have to work with on a regular basis for obvious reasons. But... I don't give a fuck. I'll insult them all I want. So I'm calling bullshit on that, and it really is just Sony cracking now. But ultimately, from reading this interview, you can't really take away much solid info from it. It's a lot of vague statements and, you know, open for interpretation sorts of things. So ultimately, I think the future of Center on Kagura 7 is still pretty vague. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to give up on Takaki. I'm, I'm going to choose to have faith in him and hope that everything works out okay. I, I honestly think it will. I'm, I'm not too worried about like the game getting ruined or anything. Uh, if it does get watered down, I don't think it's going to be very much. Like Even if it's just reduced to the levels of the 3DS Center on Kagura titles, where it's still pretty fan service but not to the extent that, say, like, Shinobi or Estival Versus or Peach Beach Splash were, then that's one thing. But 
regardless, either with seven or after seven, I think it's painfully clear that they're going to have to leave PlayStation behind as long as they keep these policies in place. But anyway, I guess that's all I got to say. So, lots of luck to you and yours.